Yeah. I love Jeff Aniston too, man. I love his big red Cadillac. The dude is cool. Yeah. He's just cool through and through because look, he's got a big red Cadillac. He's mm-hmm. got all the cool stuff. You know what? Deep down, he's just a genuine dude. That's yeah. what everybody loves about him. Absolutely. The Cadillac is an accessory and it's a cool accessory. Yeah. And it sure is an attention getter. No doubt about it. If you see that Cadillac, you're like, oh, I've seen that Cadillac because there's only one out there. Oh, the man. And he band. drives that thing around welcoming whatever yeah. comments you have about it. Yeah, absolutely. You, you guys should go check it out. Actually, in general, just go to the website and check it out, NewYorkRockExchange.com, yeah. and, and see what they do. But the pictures are on there, and they've had any number of people in that thing. Yep. I see it all of I've seen it in concord i've seen it at benicia i've seen it at, well i've seen it up at the races that we go do um, yeah you know so. yeah he takes it to the races yeah he took that thing to south by southwest in austin texas yeah and he picked up you know like he picked up slash from the airport right drove him to south by southwest and they want to get it. yeah and yeah i mean what artist isn't gonna say oh wait a minute yeah you get the limousine i get the limousine every city man i'm getting in the back of the caddy the caddy's rock and roll yep. you know a, a town car is just a, a it's just a limo. If you could say it's just a limo, but it's just a limo. Right. But a caddy, that's something different. That's showing up in style. That's showing up looking like you, you are somebody. Yep. So he is somebody. He's Jeff Anison. And here he is on the Break It Down Show. With us tonight on the podcast, we're very, very honored and lucky to have from the New York Rock Exchange, Jeff Anison. It's incredible. Woohoo! Oh, Jeff, Jeff is the applause pipe. The That's right. That's right. So uh, like, thanks for joining us. Like Jeff. a good like thirty seconds of applause, right? Yeah. Like you know, and, and then it kind of dies down, right, and, right, right. and, and then it comes dies. back up yes. again. You know, exactly. So. Yes. And then you're doing this. You know, <laughs> the thing you're, you, you know, you're kind of work in the crowd. You walk out. That's you right. tip your cap. That's right. I was one time uh, went to see Parliament. Okay. You know when the show started, the mothership. Yeah. The spotlight was on the mothership. The door to the mothership opened up. Smoke poured out of the mothership, and a glittery boot came out. <laughs> And the crowd went crazy. <laughs> and it was a solid two and a half minutes that all they got was that, <laughs> was boot, that boot and applause. Uh-huh. And, the, and the whole, th- I mean, and they just milked everything. It was just the boot. And then, you know, George Clinton came out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. so uh, what is your instrument? I what play the drums. Do you really? Yeah. Do you play anything, Jeff? I do not. I play a mean kazoo. All right. <laughs> that's about you know, the extent uh, of it. I've been thinking like the thing like I'd like to study a, an instrument and be like the baddest at it. like there's a guy that just fucks up the trombone right <laughs> and there's actually a guy that just fucks up the maracas like you're like oh my god I can't and we that. make jokes about that and yeah. Pete you yeah. know I mean I, I I have to listen to these jokes all day long all day and long. Pete says yeah man what if I could fuck up the maracas yeah and so I pulled up this video <laughs> of this guy who's just sitting next to his buddy and his buddy's got a ukulele. And he's sitting there with some maracas, and he is tearing the maracas apart. Like you never like even considered. That's it's awesome. It's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to be the guy that does the fish with the stick. You know, this thing? That thing. That's going to be my thing. The fish with the stick? Yeah, it's like a wood thing, and it's got ribs on oh, it. Oh, I know stick. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. There's a, a name for that bad boy. We're going to have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call yeah, it yeah. the fish with the yeah, stick. Yeah, right. that's what you got to do. You got to find your niche, right, right. right? And then just own it. Yeah. Own Completely it. Completely own it. Own it. Hey, so tell us about the New York Rock Exchange uh, current events. What are you guys up to? We are busy, busy, busy. We got actually, uh, we're releasing more shares in the past like two or three weeks than we have in the entire history of the New York Rock Exchange. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. It's, uh, I feel like we've kind of hit an inflection point. How How long have you guys been at it? About almost two years. Actually, October, yeah, it's been two years since we released our very first share. So for our listeners out there, if you're not familiar with the New York Rock Exchange, uh, I won't bore you with the bio. Go to NewYorkRockExchange.com. You'll find out all about it. But in in a nutshell, you can buy shares of songs from some of your favorite artists, and they're yours. You own them, and Mm -hmm. you can either receive a royalty check from those shares, or you can choose to donate your royalty to a, a worthy cause, mm-hmm. and you get special things from your favorite artists because you're a shareholder. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, I, I got to hire you to run like my marketing department. Or All something. right. So, uh, 
I love it. And one of the things I love, too, is uh, you guys take that experience, folks from our generation and before, that of having the new album and mm-hmm. examining it and holding it. It's visceral. You can touch it. Mm-hmm. And you yeah, guys that have, tactile yeah. experience mm-hmm. that we used to enjoy when we were kids. It's the no longer on. there anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. You sit in the beanbag and you just look at that thing and you read every word on it because you know there's some secret stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you've given that back, like that experience, because now you've got a CD, if you even buy a CD. There's no you CD. look at a CD. Yeah, yeah, it's all, you push a button. Yeah. Boop, enter. You buy. hear it on Pandora and you press the buy right. button and it lands in your iPod. Well, yeah. and you're usually doing like 10 other things, right? Because you're on your phone, you're on your laptop, Mm -hmm. and music is just kind of something that's playing. It's not like, you know, it used to be that when you... You had to physically put it in yeah. to something. Right. You know, yeah. And, yeah. And, you did. You had a fully tactile. Sit, you, you, were stuck, you were stuck. You're right. You were stuck in your room. It's not like you could, you know and You were stuck with the tracks. Like you would so if you had like the multi record stacker, you'd mm-hmm. be like, Okay, what record do I want to hear first? And you're only gonna get side A. <laughs> you know? Like, well, I want side B of synchronicity and then You know sometimes you thought about buying two copies too, right. so you could have side A and <laughs> side, side A B. Yeah. and side B pancaked. And if you were a chump and you just had a single record one, oh man, you know? You were hating that. Because that's what, what is like 15 to 20 minutes, and you got to get up and go flip that thing. That's right. So I remember my, my dad, when I was a kid, he hung out with this guy named Vince, who um, was a great guy, and he was very proud of his music collection, a- as they all were. My dad was a musician also, so everybody he hung out with was proud of their music collection. And I remember when they were listening to Saturday Night Fever. And what an experience that was for all of them because they did the whole thing. They passed around the, you know, the record sleeve and giving that back to a generation of kids that has lost their view of the artist. I mean, you can watch videos and, and, and all that's terrific, but there's something about holding something and having something and having memorabilia that comes straight from your artist and, and owning a piece of your favorite artist's career. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you have a vested interest. It's not just, it's one thing to say, yeah, I like insert artist here. Right. It's another thing to say, I own them. I own it. I own a piece of that. Yeah. Yeah. And Green Bay Packers fans, they mm-hmm. get to experience that because, yeah. they, you know, they can buy shares in the Packers. And there are a couple other teams that are traded that way, the Celtics, I think. I dig what it does for the but artists. You brought too. that to rock and roll. That's right. I dig that the artist gets to have other avenues to express themselves you know Mm -hmm. like if they have a a graphical artist type sensibility or if they just want to try painting you know Mm -hmm. and their fans are like i don't care what you do with the paint just Mm -hmm. put it on some paper tell us about a couple of those jeff a couple of the shares no well a couple of the shares yeah the examples of of things that you get from artists that are aside from a share in the song it's something special from the artist yeah well it's 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 different for every package that we do Uh um the last, the most recent share that we launched is Tony, Tony, Tony. And uh, I'm a big fan. You guys yeah. know Tony, Tony, big, Tony. Big fan. Right? I've been a big fan of Tony, Tony, you know, Tony all my life. The thing I love about Tony, Tony, Tony is it feels good. It does, it does feel good. It does. <laughs> They've done it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have. We listened to the song. It is fantastic. <laughs> hey, is. we don't do anything in, you know, we don't inappropriately play anybody else's material or anything on the, on the show but I wonder if just as a part of this podcast we can pipe in this, the song absolutely for, yes, can we do that absolutely okay. yeah, absolutely no problem at all. in fact there's actually there's actually three different versions of the song okay. uh, they've released two of them wow. and uh, there's one of them that's exclusive for shareholders okay. so you know you're asking about something that they do yeah. um, Dwayne Wiggins right he's the yeah. band leader one of the founding guys from Tony 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 sure. he's, he's the Tony uh, in Tony, Tony, Tony. Right. Um, he's the Tony with the Y. The Y, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's definitely the Y. But, uh, uh, so he, he is amazing. You know, I've had the opportunity to hang out with him. We're doing a lot of different stuff with Tony, Tony, Tony. And uh, uh, it, it's amazing because I've, I've been able to listen to these songs as they've grown and gestated. And, and, uh, uh, but he's got, he's got three different mixes. The first one is actually inspired by Eleanor Rigby. Uh, the Beatles. We song. were just yeah, saying yeah. because we were listening to it today. With the straight, we were thinking, you know what? These guys have been listening to the Beatles, yeah. and, and not only the Beatles. I, I was like, it's the Paul McCartney <laughs> songwriting Beatles. You yeah, know? yeah. And they've nailed that aspect. You can hear it; it's great. Yeah. And the thing is, it's still genuinely a Tony, Tony, Tony song. You can hear it in the guitar. You yeah. can hear the, you know, the vocal. I mean, it's signature Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. Tony. yeah. But 
really a departure from anything they've done yet. Complete departure. Some... Yeah, which I think is really cool. I mean, it is. I, it's I, I, I love it. I, I think that it's got, it's almost got that Pharrell sort of happy, you know, like it's just, it's it's a very different song. It makes, yeah. it does make you feel good. It does. It, it makes does. you feel good. The yeah. song is called It's a Beautiful Thing. Correct. And uh, so you're listening to it right now. Here it is. Yeah. So, uh, when when they want to do this, how does that work? How do, do they approach you? Do you approach them? What's that conversation? In this case, it was them approaching me. Uh, I was speaking at a conference that in San Francisco, good. and Wayne uh, was there, and we just immediately kind of hit it off. I, you know, he came up to me afterwards, and I was explaining, it, and he, he told me he's like Jeff, I don't just get this; I over get this, wow. <laughs> and um, and like I said, you know, we've been we've been. Uh, doing quite a bit he's he's actually he owns a recording studio and television studio in oakland in downtown oakland it's probably about 10 minutes from the airport and oh, it's amazing it's just this oasis in the middle of oakland that he's setting up to be a place that is staffed with recording engineers on both the um, uh, video and audio side as well as just artists coming through. So, you know, when they come in town, he wants them to come stop by, yeah. sure. hang out with them. You know, the Bay Area is so great because, you know, in addition to the, the music, uh, you've got the technology aspect. Sure. Right? And so um, we're setting up a New York Rock Exchange stage there so that, That's you know, fantastic. people can come in and it's almost like an Austin City Limits thing where they sure. can do like a, or day trotting, you know, where they do a, a two hour performance, you know, one take and then they record it and they put it out on the web. Man, that's great. That is terrific. It's Man, really that cool. is, you know, because we're fans of all of that yeah. live from Daryl's house and stuff like that. We love stuff like that. And yeah. so to hear uh, that Dwayne is doing that. Is, man, that's music to my ears. Yeah. I've been a fan of Tony, Tony, Tony for so long. The thing about Tony, Tony, Tony was when we were growing up in the hip hop generation in the Bay Area, Tony, Tony, Tony was, they held on to music. They were the guys who said, yeah, we get it. You know, we love hip hop and we love collaborating and we love playing. But they would be the guys who they do their their uh, appearance on David Letterman. And then they would just stay there, yeah. you know, and the band would keep playing and they would melt into the band and they yeah. were, they, oh man, I just love them so much. And this now makes total sense because I could see how he would overget it. You know, he's always been a guy who could reach into any medium and really just pull it out. Now, Raphael's been sort of the music purist and, and Dwayne's been the explorer and, you need that. Yeah. And, and and the thing that I love about Tony, Tony, Tony as a fan and as a guy in the Bay Area is that they've been able, and it speaks to the fact they haven't released anything in nearly 20 years. 18 years. 18 years. Wow. The span of time that they haven't exists because they haven't had to. You know, we, we as fans put Tony, Tony, Tony in a place where we said, explore what you need to explore. Please get back to us with whatever you find. <laughs> And they went away for 18 years, and went, you know they did other stuff. Yeah, they're touring. Lucy Pearl, and yeah. they did like tour. And, yeah, yeah. Right. and uh, and now they're back, and they're back with you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's really special, and it's it's also it's historic because when you buy one of the shares of Tony Tony Tony, uh, you actually become a part owner of the copyright of that song. I saw that. This is the first time that we've done that. It's so, yeah, yeah, but you literally. You become a copyright holder. Own a piece of that song. Own so you piece, can yeah. look somebody in the eye and say, that's my song. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. own that. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. And so um, it's great to be able to work with bands that are innovative like that. Yeah. And, you know, Dwayne and Tony, Tony, Tony is one of those bands where we come in with any artists that we're talking to and saying, okay, well, this is kind of how the program works and this is how we usually set it up and this was what works. Right. And Dwayne is the guy that's gone, well, what if we do this? Yeah. Can we do this too? Because he overgets it. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> yeah. he totally overgets it. And yeah. so he, he recognizes that, you know, that those fans are these part owners of the song 
Uh, right. Like, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. It's 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 the core of it. He he talks. We we did a video shoot with him. You guys saw the the video that's yeah. up on the website of them with the Cadillac yeah. and uh, all that sort of stuff. But he talked about how, as an artist, for him, the song is like the treasures, you know, and being able to share the treasures with the fans like that is is so you know, impactful for him. And yeah. so, you know, that day he, we just picked a shareholder and he called him. He did a Skype call, you know, and just yeah. like, hey, this is Dwayne Wiggins from Tony, Tony, Tony. What's going on, you gotta man? you got to be kidding. No, he just, <laughs> it, it was yeah. awesome. And, you know, he's he's like that. Like I said, he always wants to, yeah. you know, he always wants to do more and always wants to get in it. Yeah, yeah, you hear, you know, you hear things like that all the time. I mean, those guys, I don't know. I love them. I'm glad you guys are connected. Man, yes. I think it's so cool. It's so, and it's got this great... Like, like mutually beneficial thing because it is for the fans and here they are doing something truly unique for their fans and these fans are people that have been around for years like like John said waiting take your time figure it out well they figured something out now you know yeah. here is your unique special piece you get to share it with yeah. us and you're like you're almost like part producer you're like yeah here <laughs> You know, and you get to support your artist. They yeah. they get the money. I mean, that's great. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're doing a a, a shareholder meeting. Uh, actually, there'll be a, a series of shareholder meetings. Oh, no kidding. Them. And he, you know, he literally he's like, "This is kind of kind of new. Like, we're gonna get these people on the on the call, and they're gonna be like." God, we don't like this, or you know, we yeah. want you to change this, and you know, I mean, he he takes the whole thing very seriously. You know, that's and, pretty and, dang. And really that's... respects. You wow. know, wants to hear. Uh, what everybody wants to say. Hey, so uh, just to remind our listeners, go check it out at NewYorkRockExchange.com. See the new release. It's a beautiful thing. Tony, Tony, Tony. First release in 18 years. Yeah. And we're just talking about Tony, Tony, Tony at the minute. But there's like there's all kinds of acts that are on the site. So it's not just Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah, there's, peruse the yeah. site. Check Crystal out everything Bauer songs. What's there. one of the songs just sold out? You just sold all the shares out of. Yeah, uh, Stick Figure. Stick Figure is right. a reggae artist out of down in Southern California. Another amazing artist does all of the, the whole thing himself. Right, of he, he lays down every single track. You know, he just sits in a room with a bong, I assume, and uh, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> writes writes and lays down every track, and it's just it's it, it's amazing. Yeah. That's that's exactly what we're talking about. Those guys who are trying to figure it out. Like, there's a hundred new ways to make music, money with music. Here you go. Here's a new revenue. Sh- uh, Gene Simmons has been kind of salty lately, complaining about how rock and roll is dead and all this other stuff. And, and no, it, it's it's fine. It's just it's now it's in the control of the artist. They can do anything they want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. He comes from the generation where you know you released a big record, right? You sold a bunch of it. You actually made money releasing a big record. Yep, yep. And that's not there anymore. It doesn't work like that. It no. doesn't work like that. And fans are looking for a more thorough experience. Yeah. You really have to. Fans are jaded. Mm-hmm. It's not now that you can just sit down in your room by yourself, like you said, throw your headphones on and put the needle on side A of Frampton Comes Alive, and that's that's it. Now we live in a world where you get the tweets and you get sometimes Facebook connected or whatever the medium the artist chooses, but you're more connected yeah. to the artist than you ever could be before. There isn't that big star that's way off there, except maybe you two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's still a couple. Taylor yeah, Swift. There, there are still a couple. But now you can actually be more interactive. You're, I mean, like Dwayne was saying, this is a new experience where you can hear from your fans firsthand. We liked this. We didn't like that. You did three versions of the song. Thanks, we appreciate the one that was exclusive, and that's the one we like best, or it's the one we like least. I mean, yeah. now, as an artist, you, you can hear and respond yeah. to and what's going on. actively participating yeah. in, in what they're doing. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's, it. it's really a culture class, and it's, it's kind of funny because I think when you look at the older artists, there's some of them that haven't been able to adapt as well as others. And, you know, the older like Gene artists, Simmons, for instance. <laughs> well, it, you know, I mean, those guys, you know, Kiss is known as an extremely innovative band when it comes to merchandise. Sure. Right? Yeah. And, right. They're and the merchandising stuff. kings. So, I mean, they're making enough money that I don't think they need to, you know. There's uh, no I was like many other people. You, I imagine, as well. I was, you know, really supportive of them getting into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm glad they finally did. Yeah. But. I don't want to listen to Gene Simmons complain. <laughs> no, he, and he, he's you know, doing fine. Speaking of the Hall of Fame, he had talked about um, how like rappers are going to be going to the rap, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and that they're not rock and roll and all they do is talk. You can't sound any more ignorant, yeah. ignorant and dated. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you think all that Eminem does is talk, 
Yeah. You're, you're silly. Yeah. You just yeah. don't get it. By the way, Gene, if you're on, if you're listening to this, I, you know, we love you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we are not huge a, We don't like Gene Kiss Simmons. fans. Yeah. yeah, I love Kiss. Absolutely. Just, you know, it's just that, that's that's the generational gap. You know. Yeah. Um, what we're saying is, we want you to come aboard, yeah. Gene. Get, exactly. get into this millennium. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine what join Kiss us could do in this millennium if the Kiss Nation got into you know supporting this. Imagine what would happen at the New York Rock Exchange. Who with, among the Kiss uh, the Kiss Army would like to own a piece yeah. of the Kiss song? Love a Kiss song. Yeah. I mean. You can reserve your casket. Yeah. You can do everything from get your kid a onesie, a yeah. kiss onesie, to uh, reserve your casket. So really, from the cradle to the grave with yes. Kiss. Yes. If they partnered with the New York Rock Exchange, then their fans in the Kiss Army could actually own a piece of of a Kiss song. That's right. That's, That's huge. Right. It is huge, and, and it does. It works. Sure. You know, these guys are doing something really super cool, and people want to buy things that are super cool. They yeah. want to. Be, consume that hey can you tell us about anything in the hopper that maybe you got any breaking news for us well yes i can make a world premiere announcement here we here. go really yeah, i'll break yeah, it yeah, down yeah. here we All go right. well it's it's uh i don't know if it's that exciting but it's no. exciting to us <laughs> we're uh uh next week uh we're releasing 12 shares all together as part of our independent music collection which is featuring 12 amazing emerging artists. So these are artists that are really poised to break out. Right. And there's only going to be 100 shares of each. With each one of these shares, you own a piece of the copyright. Right. And it really adds kind of an interesting element to the New York Rock Exchange, right? Because for these artists and their fan bases, the ability to own a piece of their song is really cool and, and all that sort of stuff. But the fact that there's only 100 of them and we haven't talked about it too much, but the shares can be resold. Right. And we've had a lot of shares that have gone up in value uh, just in the short time that we've been issuing them. So, yeah. you know, we've got Ballyhoo, for example, is a right. band that we released a share of. And now it's gone up at least 4x from its original value. So people bought it at $50 and now it's worth $200. Do you guys provide a marketplace for the exchange of the of the shares after the initial IPO? We have the, the IPO. There's not one on our website yet. Right. Um, but we do facilitate it. So like on our Facebook feed, uh, we'll post a secondary market update and say, hey, we're looking for these shares. And, you know, because we've got fans that who are reaching out, out to you. Yeah, that yeah. missed out, that want to buy them. Boy. Right. And, you know, we've, we obviously know all the people that own them. And so we're trying to kind of facilitate and act as a middleman, you know, right now while we're Isn't that incredible? in the early stage. But yeah, that is really something. Anyway, so yeah. I, I mean, think about if, with one of these bands, you know, like what if you could go back in time oh. and own a share of the Beatles? Of I want to hold your hand. When yeah. they were just bumming around Germany, you sure. know, some small band that yeah. you know you heard of and you I saw them in a strip cool. joint in <laughs> yeah. Munich. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think that that's a really fun element to the New York Rock Exchange. This yeah, whole absolutely. Idea that you can buy yeah. like a rookie card. The exchange part of it. Yeah, right. and then, you know, who knows? I mean, it, you know, we, It is so this release, this batch release that you're doing the emerging artists, these are the rookie cards. These are absolutely the and rookie cards. And now is yeah. the time. And now is the time. There's only 100 of them, so get in early. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, that's great, man. But it's a, it's a great, great, great collection of artists. It's it's kind of indie rock focused. Sure. We got a little bit of reggae in there. We got a little bit of hip hop in there. We got a little hard stuff. We got a little kind of mellow indie stuff. And it's just, it's a really, for us, it's been fantastic to get to work with these young artists, right? They're all young. They're emerging. I mean, they're out there every day chasing their dreams, you know, right. them against the world, all this stuff that's can be great about independent music but to you know to get this collection of of music which i think is fantastic it's our first time kind of going through and doing the whole you know w when you buy a share you get a share of the song and you also get a compilation cd that has all 12 of the songs on it uh and so it's kind of our first uh time going through that experience of producing a cd to release on itunes and learning all that you stuff. guys have grown so much since we last talked <laughs> you, you think so this yeah, stuff really you weren't talking about it you might have been in the works but you weren't talking about it yeah, yeah but yeah. now you guys are putting together albums yep. <laughs> you're going to be putting on shows out at the oakland airport yep you know I mean, yep. this is incredible yeah 
Congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. And one of the things that our listeners are going to enjoy is uh, we'll post a picture on the website. But, you know, Jeff is a guy in a baseball cap and a South by Southwest T-shirt, and he drives around in a Cadillac with fins. 56? He's what rock and roll, 59. baby. 59. 59. Man. Yeah. So, so, hey. Yeah. Current events. This is the current events segment of the show. What do, you, what do you got for us? What's, what kind of breaking news you got for we us? We kind of talked about the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about have you. So they, they've announced the nomination class for the 2015 um, inductees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, uh-huh. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. See, here we this go. Is brand so new. we this, got like let's breaking read, news. Jeff's hired. He is officially the sound effects guy. Yeah, yeah. Read the list, Pete. So I'm going to go off my memory here, but uh, I'm going to try to pull my computer up. Yeah, pull pull it so up the, so we can have yeah. the entire list. So, you're, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these. And, and uh, look, the list is deep. It is really deep. And uh, they don't you know they don't put in 15 acts. Yeah. So most of these people are going to not get it this year. Yeah. So I'm going to pull this up. So let, let's debate it. Yeah, yeah let's talk about let's it. Let's see who goes in. So I'll, I'll throw one at you. I think we should just decide. Yeah, let's I mean, be. Okay. If it's cool with you guys, let's, right. just, let's sure. just let's just so, handle it tonight. Let's so handle it. a couple of uh, uh, we'll call them classic acts okay. that that are a little hard. You know, like I'm just not school on the spinners who are nominated, okay, or the Wynettes. So uh, uh, we'll just have you know a, a classic category for one of the five inductees. We want to go with four inductees beyond that. Let the I don't know. Let's let the classics be in because I'm with you. I mean, there are certain people that deserve to be in there that maybe I didn't grow up with. Mm-hmm. And How many are we picking from this list? That's I love I the spinners, know. though. Right. You know. I don't know. I can't name a spinner I, song. The, the, you do know them, though. I'm oh, yes, sure you do. I do. I'm yeah. sure I do, yeah. Perhaps if you sung one of the songs. You know the one that's in my head right now is the one that goes, dun, 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 dun. Uh, uh, oh, man. <laughs> Well, let me give you these nominees. Okay, so first off, let's talk about the Smiths. I never knew love before. Oh, yeah. Then came you. That was the Spinners, then right? Then came you. I believe so. Yeah, I'll double check that, too. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you, man. Okay, so here, here's your list um, in, I guess, alphabetical order. The Paul Butterfield Blues, bland, blues Band. And I can't name a Paul Butterfield Blues Band song. And that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and listen. I'm sure he's even, great. Before we go any further, all of these bands are nominated because they're absolutely Because they're fantastic. amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. all we're trying to do is go, how the heck do you even pick from this group? We'll say yeah. we'll yeah. say it's an honor to be nominated. All yes. right, Paul Butterfield. Yeah. Good way to go, Paul Butterfield. Chic. Chic. Dude. You know. Chic. Yeah. You can't. That's. I love Chic. I love Chic. My favorite drummer of all time, Tony Thompson. And uh, to me, they're in. For two reasons. Number one, their body of work is enormous. Nile Rodgers, just for being Nile Rodgers and launching the careers of Madonna and resuscitating and blowing B-52s into the stratosphere. And he was the president of the Producers Guild for many years. He's just amazing. Um, And then the other thing is Bernard Edwards and Tony Thompson are both dead. So for that, I think they deserve that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's part of there's a uh, there's a sentimentality I think yeah. to the acts going in who have passed on. Have passed on. Yeah. And, and as much as we don't like disco, you know, as as a people anymore, it's still a viable genre. And, and it launched really. I mean, it's the origin of house music. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. You have to honor it, right? Yeah, I you mean, have to. You know, I mean, it was. And, and if you're going to honor it, you have to you have to respect what Chic. And Nile Rodgers did for everybody. You know? Well, and Nile Rodgers is still at it. I That's mean, true. he did the uh, Daft Punk song last year, um, the Grammy winning right. Daft Punk song. Yeah, and they uh, he also I think produced some of the uh, recent David Bowie album that came out of nowhere. Right, Presto Change of David Bowie's got a new album. Yeah, yeah, and nobody knew about that. Anyway, <laughs> please yeah. carry on. Um, the Marvelettes. Great job, Marvelettes. We appreciate you guys coming in and, and doing what you do. So the other bands that you're going to know, you're going to hear, and this list is, like I said, it's deep. Green Day, first time Green nomination. Day. Bay first Area Act. Yeah. They're from right over there. Mm-hmm. Obviously a legit Hall of Fame. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they get in. It's just do they get in in their first year, you know. Mm-hmm. Joan Jett and Wait the Wait a minute. Hearts. Let's Do they get in their first year? It's, Here's what I'm going to say, yeah. and I love Green Day. I love Green Day. I say not yet. 
Why is that? You know, if we're going to reserve a certain number of spots, if we got 15 nominees and only five of them get in, I'm not worried about Green Day getting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's Derek like Jeter. Gimme. Yeah, yeah, Hall yeah. of Famer? Absolutely. Yeah. Hall of Famer next spring? Eh, let's wait a while. And really, you know, the names on the list, it's like they can wait because some of the other guys have been around a lot longer. Right. You know, to Carry include on. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. That's awesome. And Joan Jett has been around forever. But what say you about Joan Jett? I love Joan Jett. Yeah, me too. I love Joan Jett. Is she Rock still and Roll Hall music? of Fame right now? You know, she's never been prolific with the music making. Yeah. And she does a lot of covers. So that isn't her thing. She she's just she's a pioneer because she's a chick that rocks. You know, it's like her, Lita Ford, all those early rocking ladies. And she's been at it. You know? Yeah, she will rock and maybe punch you in the mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what has she not done? I mean, she's been in movies. She's been on TV shows. She's done the music. Thing. I mean, she... And she's punched Pete in the mouth. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that happened, right? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I love rock and roll. I mean, right. that is... Yeah. Like, that is an anthem song. Yeah. Really, that you should know, be the theme song of... The Rock and Roll, the rock Hall, and roll Hall of Fame. Absolutely. That is... However... Yeah. Joan Jett, in this year. Going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Okay, let's carry on with this. So, list. more influential than prolific, craft work. These guys just about invented house music. You know, they, the bands that they've influenced. No well, than the, the at the time that they were making music, they were probably better at electronic music than a handful of artists that became much more famous since. And so they were innovators. They made instruments out of things that at the time weren't instruments. And wow, so that makes it tough. Do you, do you have much knowledge at all about craft work at all, Jeff? No, I do not. So I was just sitting here thinking, I'm so glad this is not trivial pursuit. Yeah. Because you guys would <laughs> destroy me. Well, we've had a chance to study it for a little bit. So. Uh, but craft work, like, so uh, one of the bands that was influenced heavily by uh, was, was U2 when they did Octoon Baby. They, okay. they, they disappeared from the stuff they were doing, got into man and machine kind of music. And craft work is the band. You study for that. Gotcha. And that's just one group. And, and there's a whole host of groups that influence craft work is like the Bruce Lee of techno yeah absolutely yeah no doubt about it so craft work gigantic influence again not not like prolific with the with the greatest number one hits and all that kind of stuff but if you listen to any kind of electronic music today right. they owe a debt no yep. doubt about it mm-hmm. to craft work mm-hmm. then you have nine inch tails just in case <laughs> nice. we don't have enough heavyweights <laughs> right <laughs> Again, first year for them being mm-hmm. nominated. Yeah. So you have the, is it, do they have, does, does Trent and the fellas have to wait? Who's dead from Nine Inch Nails? Oh, I don't think anybody. Who's even in Nine Inch Nails besides Trent Reznor? Anybody? Can you name any other Nine Inch Nail? I cannot. N- nor I. No. I say Trent Reznor. It's in, but not yet. <laughs> but not, he's he's but in not the D- Derek Jeter category. <laughs> yeah. like he'll get there. Yeah, we don't yeah, have to yeah, worry yeah, about him sure. getting in. For sure. You know, we don't have to worry about him getting in. We don't have to worry about... There are just some heavyweights that you know. Eh, Henry Rollins, he'll get in there. Mm-hmm. But when? Eh, yeah. You know, if we just let Kiss in last year, if we just let Rush in last year... Especially if they're still alive making music. Yeah, I mean, and their still best relevant. Their stuff could still be to come. That's true. That's true. And and Kiss, and, not so much. Yeah. No, well, their, their time has passed for that relevance, you know, but Nine Inch Nails is still relevant. They're right. just, and they've adapted well to the new times. Yeah. And they still put albums out. So there are four members in uh, Nine Inch Nails. No right kidding. Now. Yep. Robin uh, Finnick, I guess you would say. Alessandro Cortini and a guy named Ian Rubin. See, we don't even know how to pronounce their names. Yeah, no, I yeah, don't. Yeah. Yeah. But God bless them. And there's been some other people that play live, but really, I think... Because they're nominated. This is the way I think most people would fairly characterize Nine Inch Nails, is that it, it's Trent Reznor. He's the genius behind that music, and then he can hire anybody he wants. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you were to say, hey, man, I think this would be a great vehicle for Nine Inch Nails, and I have this great idea that you know would go along with something new that you would do with selling a share for them... You would call Trent Reznor. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't call Alessandro. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, man, so uh, I got this great idea. He's like, yeah, great. That sounds great, Jeff. You should probably uh, call Trent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, because we haven't got enough giants on the list, Lou Reed. Oh. Uh, just as see, Lou Reed. I, I think you just got to. Let's remember whose idea it was <laughs> to make the decisions tonight. <laughs> 
I mean, seriously, <laughs> Who's, have yeah. we said anybody that we've tried to discuss Who doesn't, that doesn't belong? Yeah. You know? No, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, you can, you can try to make an argument. Look, against man, if you talk lose. about it in, in baseball Reed terms, in you can't. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying about Green Day is that Lou Reed's not in yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's hold on for yeah. Green Day and, and anticipate that they're coming in. But that, like you said, their best days may, may still be ahead of them. Yeah. So, as a museum piece, which is what you become when you are inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, your work is your, your work is cast in stone mm-hmm. for all to admire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you come out with a record next year that's amazing. It's like, well, we, we already bronzed you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I yeah. agree. I agree. If, if there's somebody who's not doing that anymore, yeah. yeah. Let, let the guy, I mean, we can't make any more music, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, um, right. Yeah. Can't make music Can't anymore. Make music. We're not going to see the, their, their best is ready to be cast. Right. And Lou Reed won't get a chance to really enjoy it. His fans will, but mm-hmm. it'd be nice to grab those guys who are later in their career, you know, mm-hmm. so you can get, capture mm-hmm. them. So Lou Reed is, is on that list. Yep. Um, all right. So also on the list. Nominees. We're, we're not done yet. No, no, no. There's like, see, there's a bunch <laughs> but more. wait, there's more. Yeah, yeah. and you're not gonna. So you the thought sp- you were just gonna vote yeah. yes, 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 and yes? Huh? You're like, yeah, all right, we made the decision. So the Smiths are in there. The nice. Smiths, right? And of course, to nice. go with the uh, the longevity of life, things. Morrissey yeah. has announced that he's got cancer, and he's like, if I die, I die. Who cares? So. Mm. There's you know? a Morrissey thing to say. Yeah. yeah. If I die. Yeah. <laughs> he probably said it while he st- stared. He gazed at his shoes. If I die, I die. <laughs> I want him to say it like droopy. <laughs> Can't do it. Uh, <laughs> if I die, I die. <laughs> That's as good as I can <laughs> do. Good. That was, that was wow. money. That was money. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> so, Morrissey, yeah, I think maybe the Smiths maybe get my vote just because I... You know, Morrissey deserves to get in. Mm-hmm. His best work. God bless you, Morrissey. Clearly behind him. Mm-hmm. And he knows it, and he said as much. Yeah. And maybe we like it if he sees it before he passes on. Yeah. But we yeah. our days are numbered with him. But yeah. before we put the Smiths in, okay, we have to reckon with Sting. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, that... Is that the last one? No, no, no. Oh my god. No, no, no. No, no, no. There's 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 at least three more giants on this. Sting. Is still is, is Sting still making music? Yeah. I, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He sure is. He's still making good music. Good music. Good yeah. Music. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And look, his audience loves him and they let him do whatever he wants. He's already yeah. earned that. He's like, "Listen, what do you want? Do you want ska? Do you want reggae? Do you want punk? Do you want post punk? Do you want prog rock? What do you yeah. want?" I'm not even going to call it a thing. Yeah. I'm just yeah. going to start playing and I got these five guys with me. Yeah. yeah. And one of them's got this instrument you've never seen before. Yeah. He's playing it with his foot. Yeah. 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 Are the police in? Yes. Yeah, they, they are already. They got so in Sting already is in. He's already in. A way. in. But 2003 most, they got in. Yeah. yeah, most of his work though is post it's post. post I mean the police catalog is incredible, but most of his work is after. That. It, but it's it's six albums. Yeah. That's true. That's it. Yeah. Well, he puts out good albums. But though. he's had since the police more than that, hasn't he? Yeah, the police are five albums. The police are five, five albums. albums. I know he's had more than five yeah. albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, it's hard to it, who's bigger, Lou Reed or Sting, you know? See, I was, my immediate thought was Sting has got to get, you know, I mean, because there, there's a, you can make an argument that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame should not just be stodgy old artists. And, yeah. Uh, you know, people that have, you've never, a younger generation person may never not have heard of. Sure. And so keeping it relevant and putting in a Green Day, you know, or yeah. Sting, not that Sting's that young, but the police are already in. Yeah. I mean, Sting's just off having tantric sex someplace, right? Yeah. So it's not <laughs> yeah. like he's in Perhaps. a hurry or he yeah. really needs this. He's already he, the in. The last thing he's in is a hurry. Yeah, <laughs> He's already in. So yeah. that, to me, kind of pushes him He's down, breathing down deep. Down okay. He's breathing deep, and he's been fucking for two days. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got some candles burning. He's got some candles burning. Nice. And, and he's, he's still gyrating, but he's trying to get a cramp out of his foot. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're bringing up a good point, though, because they have those great jam sessions. They have those bands that come out and really participate. You know, like uh, some of the bands like that do a lot of that. Tom Petty is always there. He's like, man, I love this. You know, I'm going to come out here. You two always yeah. participating. Yeah. Um, 
you can't keep Mick Jagger out of that building. Yeah. It's always there. Yeah. So you want you want a band like that that'll come in. Bruce Springsteen mm. participates a lot. So yeah. you want someone that's going to come in and do it. And I don't know if Sting's that guy. I don't know. Okay, you ready for the next lane? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Ah, oh, wow. he's in, 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 in. Yeah. He's, okay, yeah. I love all of these acts. I love sure. everybody. Stevie Ray Vaughan's my number one vote. <laughs> Your number one? He's, he, you still haven't even heard the last two. He's inner than in. I Is can't. Really? I cannot vote Stevie Ray Vaughan not in because he embodies rock and roll. He died young. In a helicopter crash, yeah, from going from making rock and roll on his way to make more rock and roll, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. After he gave up his rock and roll lifestyle, right? You know, here's the other thing. I just wanted this side note about Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, I went to go see Jeff Beck, and he was at the time playing. It was the Guitar Shop album. He was touring the Guitar Shop album with Tony Hymas and Terry Bozio. And I went to go see Terry Bozio, but I love Jeff Beck. So I want to go see Jeff Beck. And it was a co-headline thing. So they would leapfrog who was the headliner every other night. And the night that I went to go see him at the Arco Arena, he was the headliner. And the opening act was Stevie Ray Vaughan. And I went to go see, like I said, Jeff Beck and Terry Bozio. And Jeff Beck was spectacular. He did not disappoint. He was amazing. He was Jeff Beck, and Terry Bozio was Terry Bozio, and Tony Hymas, I don't even, you know. Yeah. I, I, Stevie Ray Vaughan kicked his ass. Did he really? Kicked his ass. I mean, left us That's mouth great. agape. Right. And the I was with, I think there were four of us, four dudes, you know, dude going to rock out to Jeff Beck, and we left there thinking, man, Jeff Beck was awesome. Stevie Ray Vaughan whooped his ass. Mm. What, and it was co- unanimous. What comes to mind when you think of Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jeff? Like, what 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 do you think of? Just, I think you said it. it's like the essence of rock and roll. Yeah, I mean that's you know. Yeah, he looks scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know? he, the whole thing, though. Yeah, you know, soup to nuts. Like they take a picture of him, and you, you don't see the cigarette, but you know there's a cigarette somewhere close by. And I think there's a bottle <laughs> of Maker's Mark at <laughs> yeah, his feet, an empty one. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, he is. Uh, Smoking hot, white lightning, rock and roll, you know. Yes. Peeling out in a 59 Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that, was, that's his brand of rock and roll. It yeah. is. Yeah. And man, he could fuck up the guitar, you know. And there's no, we also have this debate about rock and roll Hall of Fame being really rock and roll Hall of Fame. You know, because Linda Ronstadt got in. Okay, Linda Ronstadt. But God come on, Linda, Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> In the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, we're debating Green Day and Linda Ronstadt's yeah, yeah. sneaks in. So, and you know, again, a great talent, a right. tremendous, uh, but rock and roll, mm-hmm. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, before Stevie Ray Vaughan, Linda Ronstadt got in. I, Linda Ronstadt might be the greatest artist in her genre, but damn, Stevie Ray Vaughan mm-hmm. made people cons- they, people look at him and they say him and Jimmy, you know, yeah. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, mm-hmm. you and know? by the way. Uh, might not smell too cool. Yeah. And if he shows up to ask you, you know, hey, I'm here to pick up your daughter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. Take it easy. <laughs> this is kind of our rock and roll test. Yeah. Could they come date your daughter? They showed up at the door, you know? Like Gene Simmons they says. not be able to. Right. Gene Simmons says rock and roll is dead. I'll tell you, that's the test. So if Gene Simmons shows up, and obviously age appropriate to date my daughter, I'm be like, here's your Gene Simmons. That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't care. You know? But Chris Brown. No, <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. No. You yeah. know, because no. I, I don't know what you're going to do. You right. know, right? So uh, that's our. There rock might and roll be test. something dangerous going on, and my daughter might like it. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, let, let's cover the one of the acts I was saving because this is my number one pick, and it's NWA. Oh wow! Yeah. They didn't get in last year. Linda did. NWA didn't. Wow. How about yeah. this, Mr. Anderson? Oh shit! I'm here to date your daughter. <laughs> I'm MC Ren. You open the door. <laughs> it's Ice Cube. Then there's Ice Cube. There's Easy E with the curl. I mean, you you can't say that about Ice Cube anymore because no. now he makes children's films. I yeah. would totally, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could hang out and yeah. you know. Oh, quit faking like you're mad. Oh, cut it out, <laughs> cut it out. He's like a Muppet now. Like, you know how when a Muppet gets mad, you just want to ruffle his <laughs> hair. He, and go, oh, cut guy it guy out. Is he's making the dark commercials? No, no, that's not him. He just looks like him. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. 
Um, yeah, but NWA for me, that's my NWA. number one. Those guys need to be there. And so this is the antithesis yeah. of the Gene Simmons comment because mm-hmm. they rapped and they were frightening. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard straight out of Compton, I was in Ben Lopez's garage. Mm-hmm. And I walked in and I we were, you know, in the Bay Area, we were privy to Too Short. We had heard the beginnings of, of, of the genre and were intimately familiar with it. But NWA, that was ridiculous. So you've got an NWA memory because you have to. Because everybody has a thing where I like, had to reckon with. You, that was music you had to deal with. Mm-hmm. So what's your, what's your NWA story? Um, I think it was driving in Winston Hogard's Toyota Camry. See? Yeah. That, that's, so here's the thing we discussed, right? They can't even perform those songs that they say. Yeah, yeah let's say and, they're inducted into, yeah. the, into the hall. <laughs> and the hall's got to be terrified. Like, yeah. what songs are Cue you going to play? Yeah. Yeah. You and who's going to join you? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was Probably Tom deal, Petty. Right? Yeah. Because Tom then. Petty will go up there. <laughs> So what were you saying? Oh, I, I was just saying. I mean, that was that was part of the appeal. I think yeah. it was just that they had pushed it. Yeah, so far, absolutely on so many different they didn't levels. Right, I mean, not just, just push it. They took a sledgehammer to it and, and yeah. kicked it. it off the edge. Yeah. And and not just, but I mean, also with you know the cult. I mean, their name was NWA. Right, yeah. you right. knew what that you can't even for. say like, it. Oh my god. You yeah, know, yeah. How, how is this a a thing? So you right, know, for and it me was that like, was high school, and so it was. Sure. It was imp- I was impressionable in that way because it was just like whoa. You yeah. Know? So really, they're on right. stage. It was music you had to deal. You with. had to deal with it. You still have to deal with. It. You still got to think, man. You know how do they do that? So so they go out to do the jam session, you know, because they get inducted, and, and whoever does the induction, maybe Quincy Jones does the induction, and uh, they go out there, and Drake or somebody comes out to perform, and he's like straight out of Compton, motherfucker name. I, wait, sorry, I can't say that. Was, never mind. I was uh, yeah, I'm still yeah. under contract with Disney. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. Okay, this one's called Fuck the Police. Wait, nope, can't do that one either. They're gonna have to pick a song, 18 songs down their list, and it's gonna be, it's you know, they can't. They're so rock and roll, they can't perform at the arena. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. TV. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have. You gotta. That it's is... gonna be a private show but over can, at, over at Dwayne's <laughs> hangar. But can you imagine the look on Tom Petty's face yeah. when they get to the chorus? <laughs> <laughs> and now here's Tom Petty. Yeah. Solo Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> Dr. Dre, Ice Cube. What are those guys done? It, it, that's just that Red part. Ones. Culturally, what yeah. have they changed? You know. Yeah. NWA <laughs> made it terrifying. And then they went on and did a lot of other stuff. A lot of other stuff. There's yeah. genius in their work, you know. I confirmed it was NWA the song. Okay, good. good. <laughs> okay, but see, you have a song, and you know where you were, what car yeah, you were yeah, in, yeah. you know. I remember we were uh, at Chico partying, and uh, police came to break up the party, and uh, one of my guys was a DJ, and and he starts playing "Fuck the Police," "Fuck the Police," oh. and I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. We're all gonna get our heads you can't kicked. Do that, you know. This is terrifying. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's my pick. They mm-hmm. have to be in. The other that's ones we can roll. debate. Yeah, but that is as rock and roll as rock and roll. You right. want anti-establishment? <laughs> like, I don't like the police. Yeah. I mean, they were pissed off, and they yeah. were, and they didn't care. No. Nope. That was the name of their damn band. <laughs> yeah. They didn't care. So, who else? War. War. Yeah. One of my favorite bands of all time. Probably my earliest musical influence. I remember listening to War as a child. And having revelations about the way music worked because of war. I would listen to summer or all day music or, you know, like my dad was in bands that played war songs. Mm -hmm. And those are the songs that I connected with. And I would, you know, hear it and feel it and understand that this is where the song changes. And this is where this part comes in. And this is the part I can sing along to again. And I was five and connecting with music because of war. This That's is really cool. this is what Jeff is selling. That moment you're in the beanbag with the cans on your head, and you're just even if you're not reading it, you're looking at that jacket from that record. Yeah, you know. Now I grew up. In, you know, my dad was a great provider. Jeff. Do you want a beer? He was around. Are you ready for okay. that one? Hey, get, look at beer? this is the great thing about being on the Break It Down show. Is beers come? That's right. In the middle of the show. That's right. Um, but I will say, as as Pete walks over to the refrigerator to get us some more beers, yeah. Can I get a whatever you're having, Pete? 
think what you need is the thing about cute warm. little cocktail hostess. Yes, we. Do, know, yes, I mean, that is the no offense, the thing Pete, that Pete. But, uh, Pete that is everything Pete is not. Pete is wearing some some shorts. You know some Sh- some short. They're short shorts. Daisy, Daisy Dukes. Dukes I think. Yeah. yeah. Is that the name of it? Right. <laughs> also, what were we talking about? We were talking about war. Here's what I'm going to say about war. If they don't get in this time, then we'll know that there is, there is no Latino on the voting panel. Because any Latino our age or older has war in their iPod. Really? Sure. I mean, war is the music of lowrider culture. You know? Cisco kid. The world is a ghetto. Yeah. And I was going to... This is what I was going to say. My dad... Well, I, I grew up with a great dad... Uh, and a great mom, but my dad was a terrific provider, so I never, you know, needed, uh, we were never, I never knew anyway if we were short on something, because I always had food in the refrigerator, I, and then uh, the world is a ghetto. I didn't know what a ghetto really was, yeah, yeah. and that album opened my eyes to economic realities, and how everything was different, and it took me further away than, I mean, I had never really ventured in my psychological or emotional mind more than you know outside of my neighborhood everything you know i knew as a child and the world is a ghetto came out when i was probably six so i'm watching this band show me a whole side of life yeah that's different from my own yeah and the funny thing about them being the soundtrack of a generation of latino and lowrider culture is that there was not one mexican in that band (laughs) <laughs> they were from East L.A. Yeah. and not, not one Mexican. But you can hear the influence, though. Oh, yeah. Music. Yeah. You know. Are you familiar with much of the war catalog at all? No, I'm not. It's uh, You'll have to give it a listen, and uh, uh, you'll, you'll hear it. So uh, let's get to the final name on the list. And it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you I know. draw a whole new audience if I you're blasting we war out of the 59 Yeah, no, yeah, there's, yeah. There's yeah. One more. And he's no slouch. This guy is in the uh, Music Writers Hall of Fame. He won a Grammy for R&B Song of the Year in 1971, the year when Marvin Gaye did his best work, and he beat Marvin Gaye. It's Bill Withers. Ooh. Ain't No Sunshine, which is oh. good. This guy's won three Grammys, and the songs are iconic. Like that song right there. I think that song, every day, some element of that song is texted to somebody else around, you know? Mm-hmm. On Facebook. Every I know. Day, I you know. You can see it. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I, know, I text I know. that all the time. <laughs> Lean On Me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Grammy winner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what was the other one? Is it uh, Just the Two of Us? Just the Two of Us with Grover Washington Jr. Yeah. So my thing for Lean On Me. But all kinds of, man. Yeah. Bill Withers. You know what Bill Withers did? Bill Withers made it okay to be a baritone. He made it okay to have a deep voice and sing songs. Because you had Marvin Gaye. And, you know, I mean, of course you had Barry White, too, but you had Marvin Gaye and you had Al Green and you had everything that was kind of in popular music in that register. James Taylor, you know, and then Bill Withers comes along and ain't no sunshine when Mm -hmm. she's gone. That's right. Yeah. You know who played bass on that song? Who? Donald Duck Dunn. Donald Duck. You know the guy from uh, the Blues Brothers band. He's in that. Oh, no way. Yeah. He was in he was in Booker T's MGs. Yeah. He was the bass player for Stax Records. He was the guy that was always around, played on all the Stax songs, yeah. all the, you know, sitting on the dock of the bay. Yeah, and all he did stuff. all that, yeah. So, yeah, so he's in there, doom, doom. He's barely doing anything but making that song haunt, you know? It's great. And so so the thing with that, I think, too, the impact is, like, lean on me. Like, if, if I give you the image of, like, you and your buddies are sitting there and that song comes yeah. on, you have to sing it. Yeah. Cannot control yourself. Yeah. What's Bill Withers up to? Uh, still working. Still, still working. Yeah. See? Still working. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what he ought to do? Oh, yeah. That's a guy. You need to get Bill Withers. He ought to release, a, he ought to release shares of a song to his fans. Uh, man, that'd be good. I'm in. I'm yeah. in. <laughs> good enough. I mean, that dude is a legend, man. Bill, if you're listening... Uh, Bill, are, yeah. are you going to give him my email address? Like, yeah, at the end of the yeah. podcast or something like that. Is it is it hard? Is it like Jeff at New York Rock Exchange? Yeah, it's nothing at all like that. <laughs> <laughs> Could Man. you contact the New York Rock Exchange if you went to the New York Rock Exchange website, yeah. New York Rock Exchange dot com? Yeah, Man. perhaps. So Bill Withers, 
That's it. That's Man, that's list. tough. That is a tough it list is. of nominees. It is. It is. All right, really Jeff. kind of set us up there, I think. You know, you kind of started it's off. It's not my and, fault. And just, it's alphabetical you know. except Jeff's for make, I pulled Jeff's out NWA. Make, go ahead and make all the decisions That was alphabetical? Tonight. That was alphabetical except for NWA, except who I added in because I wanted to have okay. a – I want to highlight them. Yeah, that. yeah. Because they're so goddamn scary, you know? Scary. Yeah. But Bill Withers, man, you know, there was a lot of grease to Bill Withers, too. And I think the thing about Donald Duck Dunn and his role in Ain't No Sunshine was he just corralled the grease. Mm -hmm. Because that song was, man, it was gritty and it was funky. And he was, you know, he was a man in a dark place, you know? So so who gets in? I mean... We can do it a couple of ways. Do we think what's actually going to happen, or you can? Who do you think's most deserving in that super stacked group? What do you want to do, Jeff? Your call. You're the guest. I think that we go ahead and choose it. Okay, let's choose it our way. All How right. many nominees do we have? You got about fifteen. 15? Maybe. And how many Maybe spots do we have? Eleven. <laughs> yeah. Twelve. <laughs> I think twelve, 12 will cover spots, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, well, um, you don't get that many. They don't induct that many, so we're just going to do five. All right, I'm going to take on. Stevie Ray Vaughan. All right, right off Stevie's the okay. So All right, well, that's, that's great. One. You take okay. the pressure off of me because yeah. he had to go in, and so you 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 took one of took one of my musts without taking one of my picks. All right, well, who else? And, and I'm not going to argue Stevie. He he belongs in that guy yeah. is rock and roll. He was virtuoso on the guitar. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What do you got, Johnny? Anybody you want to nominate for the uh, final pick here? Not the final. I say Sheik. I know. I know. I'm going to get some flack for saying Sheik, but I love Nile Rodgers. And who's your favorite? Who's your favorite drummer of all time? Tony Thompson, my favorite drummer of all time. Tony Thompson. Only because this group is so stacked. I mean, if it was Nile Rodgers, I'd let him in. Yeah. But as Sheik, it's disco, and that in this group, for me. I can't vote for that. You can't vote for that. All right. And that's with all the love in the world saying, man, Sheik has done a lot. But you can override me, Jeff. You can trump no, it. No, no, no. I'm that's also that's voting Sheik because the, when we release this podcast, yeah. I'm sending Nile Rogers a note saying, Nile, click on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to enjoy it. We voted you in. Yeah. yeah. And let's understand, I, I love Nile Rogers. The, what he's done for music, thank you. You know, I'll, he belongs in. How about Lou Reed? What are you going to do about that? Mm. Because I don't believe he's in for the Velvet Underground. I don't think that that has made the cut yet. You know what, though? For me, uh, I'm not discounting his greatness because I have no right. But, man, I got Take a Walk on the Wild Side, and that's it. In my, in my, He's more influential. He cut more ground, and other people came in and did, and did the, uh, the big work. You know, He showed them the way. That's that's his thing. The Pathfinder. You know what? I'm just going to throw this out there because, you know, some of the first light of day that we saw of of Stevie Ray Vaughan was on the Let's Dance album. Okay. Are you going back to Nile Rodgers again? And that was produced by Nile Rodgers. So I'm just saying, <laughs> if you are doubting the rock and roll credentials of Nile Rodgers, <laughs> man. Rogers. Jeff, what are we going to do with Joan Jett? Like I said, at the beginning... Mm-hmm. I thought that she was a lock, right? Just because of I love rock and roll, right? But now I think that I'd I'd probably make her wait a little bit longer. You know, I'm going to tell you she gets in. You think so? Because it's a business, yeah. And you've got to cater to all of the demographics that come in, and there's a whole lot of women out there, and she did pioneer it. That is true. How many women are there on the list? On this list specifically, there's Joan Jett, and then there are Marvelettes, and I'm assuming the Marvelettes. Or three chicks. And they're probably not actively going to participate in the mm-hmm. process, you know? Because mm-hmm. if, if they are there, they're probably older and, and they don't have a whole lot of time left. And I hate to say it, I hate to I hate to say this, but you could bring up any three chicks in, in a sequin dress and say, ladies and gentlemen, the Marvelettes. And, they're, <laughs> and they're them, the three of them and Tom right. Petty on the stage <laughs> to do the induction. Yeah. And hey, look, I'm watching the Marvelettes. They were great. And it could be the two chicks who sting, who you know tour with Sting and, and Pete, and Pete yeah. in, a, in a sequin dress. <laughs> hey, everybody. I sing bass in this band. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm Pete Marvel. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so, so far we've got Stevie Ray Vaughan is in. Stings was stinging. 
I look good. Don't give Jeff any more beer. I, I look good in taffeta and chiffon. <laughs> I bet. I do. So, uh, Joan Jett, John, what do you think? We're on the fence here. Uh, we know she's a market, and she is she is rock and roll. No you are rock it. and yes. roll, Joan Jett. I love you. Hold off until next year. All right, so next year. What she's going to get in, though. You know she's going to get in. She has to, yeah. yeah. So, and then the other thing we talked about, we, we rediscovered Susie Quattro this week. And, uh, you know, if Joan Jett's in, you better have Susie Quattro right there next to her. <laughs> 50 million albums. 50 million albums, Susie Quattro. That chick still wears super tight jumpers. She don't care. <laughs> How old is she? She's she like 64. 50 years in rock and roll. She yeah. was performing in the 60s. Right. So, so. she's Okay, so if, if 50 years in rock and roll, let's mm-hmm. assume she's... Approaching 70. She's got to be somewhere in the 60s. And I'm not saying, hey, Susie, how are you doing? Or anything like that. But she looks great. But what's more rock and roll than that? She made her own way, you know? Yep. Despite anything else, anybody. And no one can name a Susie Quattro song. No No one can name it. But, you know. I can. She did that song with Chris, what's his name? That's true. She did. And it was called, uh, what's the thing? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Something about coming out. nothing. Oh, coming out. uh, (laughs) It was something like that. It was. Yeah. It don't and matter. Something though. about her heart being on the table. She's or? not nominated. What okay. do we do about Sting? I say wait. Oh, I already laid my oh. my cards on the table for All that right. one. Yeah. Wow. Making Sting wait. The police are in, but you make Sting wait. That's tough. Yeah. That is. A, that's a tough choice. We're being we're being pretty strict here. It's good. Hey, yeah. We got tough choices to make. Yeah. yeah. This is not Sometimes like you got to make hard thing. decisions. That's, that's not. That's All right. right. So so we we've said that we think Sting I'd, can stand away. I'd wait list them for for this conversation. Like if we get through and you know we yeah. got two or three. Left okay. At the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so far we've only got one. So, and I'll uh, agree with you there. If there's a, a final pick, hey, we didn't use a pick. Right. We go, we go Sting. Um, what about Bill Withers? I say yes to Bill Withers. I, I, I got to say yes to Bill Weathers, too. Man. Because the guys you mentioned, every guy you mentioned in that little piece we talked about with mm-hmm. him, James Brown, whooped him in 71. Mm-hmm. Beat Marvin Gaye at his absolute best. Mm-hmm. You know, Songwriters Hall of Fame, yeah. songs that you have to sing when you hear it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How and, many, yeah. and a body of them, too. Right. It's not Stevie like Wonder. one standout song yeah. that everybody can remember. But he the beat fact Stevie that Wonder. There's, there's Jackson Five. Jackson Five. All played that year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, so Bill Withers, we're, we're in agreement. Bill Withers is in. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. He's in for the clav part in "Use Me." Yeah. Mm, man. Yeah. yeah. That is so good. He's in for who is he and what is he to you? I mean, he sang songs at that time that were just about a heart that was thoroughly broken and trampled on, and how you feel when it's just you know what I don't care. He's in. I'm a big fan of the Steve Miller band, and I love the triple lovey dovey. Yeah, he's in because lovey, he dovey, was lovey, dovey, lovey, dovey. all the time. All the time. He's in because he did the 26 times I know, and they were different I knows. Yeah. <sighs> oh man, yeah. that was good. That yeah. was good. Um, okay. Yeah. So we got two that are in. Big one fan on, of Steve Miller too. One on the way. Yeah, you got to be. I don't think is he be, in. I he in? Yeah, I was gonna yeah, ask. I don't think they are. Steve it's imminent though. They'll have to be in at some point. If they're not, well, I'll have to check and see. Um, I'm keeping track on my fingers. What about craft work? What do we think about that? Oh, I think they're definitely not ready. Not ready. I mean, if we're if we're saying not yet to Joan Jett, we got to say not yet to craft work. And if she can't get in, because they're they're the, the the their genre's version of craft work. You know, they got the Nile Rodgers has been everywhere, done everything. He's like 80% of Quincy Jones. And Quincy Jones has more Grammys than he has anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so I say Kraftwerk has to wait. Okay. M- NWA. NWA's in, in my book. Yeah, you know I already know I'm picking them. What do you think, Jeff? I think, I think they're in. Anything to add on that at all? No, I mean, it's just, it's... It's it's interesting how we talk about like for example Linda Ronstadt right. not qualifying as rock and roll yeah and there are a lot of people that would argue that rap music right. doesn't qualify rock roll, as, right. as, as rock and roll sure now I happen to love rap and I love kind right. of all genres of music but um, I do too 
And I think it comes down to your definition of rock and roll. Yeah. And for me, rock and roll is not just four bars of blues based and guitar, you know. Rock and roll to me is the lifestyle. It's it's the emerging youth. It's the the generation that kicks in the door and says, "This is you know, this is what we're about right now today." And when we look back on the the acts that were most influential and that we love the most, like you know Elvis and the Beatles and the the things that defined rock and roll, Chuck Berry, I think N.W.A. just as a statement maker, they belong there for it, that. It lives up to the essence of yeah. yeah. Of yeah. what it is. I mean, think about Led Zeppelin and yeah. how people felt about Led Zeppelin yeah. when they were wrecking hotels and, you know. Right. Doing all those things yeah. that they did. That you, all those things that they did. Yeah. That's what, that's what NWA was in 1988. And if, if rap isn't rock and roll, then why the heck did the Beastie Boys become giants of rap and sample the hell out of, <laughs> out of Led Zeppelin? Yeah. 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 Right. Four, four time blues. Be- oh, that's all over rap, you yeah. know. Go go find me a Dr. Dre song that doesn't cover that genre. You know, yeah. he's got that. He's yeah. got that covered. I still think one of the greatest music videos of all time was the Run DMC Aerosmith Walk This yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. That was the I mean, you know what? Even literally in that video they kicked a wall. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's really what they were doing. They were busting down the wall. Yeah. And they passed the torch back to Aerosmith because Aerosmith took off after that. Yeah, Run yeah, DMC yeah. was kind of done, yeah. you know, yeah. not done, but just they weren't what they were. You know, they had reached their peak at that point. And both those bands are in. Right. So whose house go. runs house. <laughs> All right. So we got three. then. We got three that are in and we got a maybe um, we have to deal with the Smiths. Mm. Oh, man, that's tough. So the 80s are underrepresented. In, in this in, list, in the or hall, in the hall of fame, in general, in hall of fame in general, yeah, you you just don't have many acts that were big. That and that, and that doesn't include Bruce Springsteen as an '80s act, although he did a lot of work in the '80s. It includes you too as an '80s act, even though they started in the '70s. They really became something in the '80s. In the 80s, yeah. But that new wave kind of music, you've got the Police, if you're going to call them new wave, and you got you two, and it's not a whole lot beyond that. So, uh, are the Smiths in? Hmm. Now, I don't care about any of what you just said. All right. You know, the underrepresentation of the 80s, I think that's going to ha- that's going to catch up. It's just because the 80s were just a minute ago. Yeah. And yeah. we we all know that that's not true and we're just getting old. But It's tough for me because I, you know, I was a child of the 80s and yeah. right? I listened to a lot of that. I sure. did not listen to the Smiths that much. Right. You know, and so it's yeah, you know, man, I'm with you. I think if you're going to have that conversation, I think you got to open the book on all the '80s artists and really look at you yeah. know who's who's in and and there is some in. work to do to get caught up on some other folks that like Lou Reed is not in, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so so there is, is Genesis some work in? to do. Speaking of '80s bands, uh, I'm not Bill sure. Collins. In it. There you go. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about '80s bands and underrepresentation, let's start with the you know. Bands yeah. like Genesis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some conversations to be had there. In excess? Are they in? Oh, in no, excess. not even close. Oh, my gosh. Not, not even, even close. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, it, th- there's some work to do there. And they got sure. a dead guy. <laughs> they got a dead guy. And they got songs. Listen, one of the things we like w- about the guys that uh, that do well, like Luther Van Rose, Henry Con- Eric John Connick Jr., Michael Hutchins is one of those guys, too. He will get you laid. He, he will. will sing to your lady, and she'll be like, "You know what? I can't have you, yeah. but I'm going home with this guy. Yeah. I got, and I got to do something. And, and I'm you. fine with that." Yeah. Let Harry Connick. I have spent money on Harry Connick Jr. You know what? I've dropped. I've dropped. So uh, I've sat in some pretty darn good seats in some pretty small venues watching Harry Connick Jr. And I spent for those seats because I knew it was going to happen. This is the uh, dating tip segment of the show. That's right. Now, here's the funny thing. Uh, rock and roll, Harry Connick, by our definition, absolutely not. If I, not, Hi, I'm here to date your daughter. D- honey, <laughs> Harry Connick Jr.'s here. You better get ready. Oh, yeah. Here. here, here here's a condom. Harry. <laughs> Harry. Do you want, what did you, do you want to take my car? What do you want to? And uh, so, yeah, along those lines, he's, he's no NWA, but. Um, it's different. You know, he's, it is different. His is just the music. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because Bill Withers is not an NWA. No, but, no. But it's, it's true. It's kind of like the opposite of that. You right. Know, it's 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 like it doesn't have to be about 
the revolution. It can right. Also it be, doesn't have. It, sometimes yeah. it can be about the pain it, and the. It's about moving you. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and and taking you someplace. Yep. And, and that can come in a lot of different ways. And that's ways. where that you sing. You, know, you get next to your buddy. And you hug him. You have to hug when you sing "Lean on Me," <laughs> and you have to rock side to side, side to side. You have to. You don't have a choice. That's why he gets in. Yeah. Right. You know where, but that's impact versus influence, like Kraftwerk or Chic, where these guys change the way music is made. Yeah. NWA. Not only influence, but like game changing and yeah. Nirvana level influence. The the who, for, all those yeah. bands, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nirvana's in, right? I assume. Nirvana is in, yes. They they got in uh, two years ago or last year, one of the very recently. Very recently. So uh, um, we've got three that are in, right, and await. And uh, who did we discover a second ago? We discovered um, Bill Withers. Bill Withers. Did we yeah. say yes to Bill Withers? We said yes to, we Bill, said yes Withers. to Bill Withers. He's in. And then we talked about. Uh, Sting, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, the Smiths. The Smiths. We the Smiths. Smiths. So, we're, so we're waiting on the Smiths. Is that what we're saying? Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I vote wait. I'll, I'll defer to you guys. but You but should check fine. out their greatest hits album because it's stocked. I mean, it's, it? it's a double album and, and there's no weak songs on yeah. it. It's excellent. Um, in their genre, what they did at their time, they were the band. Mm -hmm. But it's three, four year stops. Mm -hmm. So so there there is some potential waiting there. And that's being hypercritical. So I understand mm -hmm. that. I mean, they definitely belong. They for sure have influenced a lot of bands since then. This Nine is like when you're judging the finals of yeah, the, yeah, uh, you, Miss America pageant, right. you know, yeah, and you're right. down to quibbling over on the, that one. Man, I don't over know the cut the, of the bikini or yeah. the, the color is just not quite right. So right. tell me about the cut of the bikini of the Nine Inch Nails. And I got a thing for Miss <laughs> Ecuador, but she's got that eye that goes like this a little bit. Just a little bit. She got How much? It's a, it adds character, the, I think. The $2,500 boob job, you know, <laughs> with the leaner. Yeah. yeah the leaner. <laughs> the the walleye. Uh, the walleye. <laughs> What's kind of northeast a little yeah. bit? <laughs> but we love her, though. We do. So what about what about? I'm Nine into that, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I, I have to say, you know, when I see a chick, like I, I really dig uh, Amanda Peet. And you know what I dig about Amanda Peet is you watch her in a movie and she's beautiful. But if you somebody says, Amanda, she turns around real fast. There's just one eye just goes whoop, just a little bit behind, just a touch. Seriously? Just a little bit behind. And I go, ooh, something's exciting about that. Wow. I've never noticed that about <laughs> Amanda Peet before. Well, so there you go. You know, uh, Shannon Doherty has two faces. The left face and the right face, totally different. Really? Yeah. You, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You have to always see it. From then on, you're like, all you can do is look at it. <laughs> She's got two faces. It's very, very, uh, it, is that it a, draws you in. Wow. It's not a bad thing. Okay. But it's just. Is she's it a got, natural thing? Or is it like yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just Botox born with, 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 with no, 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 no. She, she's always at it. Okay. She's always, she's got more like, well, you just have to look at it. See, yeah. One face is more almond shaped. The other one's more apple shaped. I am learning so much on this show. Like I, you know. This is like a public service that you guys provide. <laughs> Knowledge is power. It's true. You know, we, yeah. need, we need a Cadillac story. We need to hear a story about the Cadillac and someone doing anything in the Cadillac. Is, any, is there anything good that has happened with the Cadillac? Because it's so iconic for what you guys do. I don't know that there's any one experience. I need to have one. Like, I need to have a story because this is, this is a great, it would be great to have a go-to story right. about somebody getting drunk and, yeah. you know, and then we broke down here and, you know, right. and, and something happened. But yeah. Pete and the Daisy Dukes. Yeah. yeah. And all of a <laughs> no, sudden, no, 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 no. And the, all of a sudden, yeah. and I started washing Why it. Why you got to take it there? Come on. We were with Amanda <laughs> oh, sorry. Pete and sorry. her lazy eye and, and right. now, now <laughs> I'm... <laughs> You just ruined the whole Man, mood. He's got a lazy just ruined eye. the whole thing. <laughs> the lazy eye didn't ruin it. Oh, I, man. That's the spirit. No, yeah. you know, the um, um, all the artists that we work with sign the roof. So the roof is covered with signatures. That's pretty damn cool. So, wow. You know, I think, I think the great thing about the Cadillac is that, you know, you're driving it around and you it, it impacts people. Right. Right. My other car is a Prius and... You know, which so, so there you go. Is no a, one's signing the Prius. It, 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 nobody cares, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you you're passing completely unnoticed, you know, through life in the Prius. Right. The Cadillac, people are always looking. The you have to remember opposite. that sometimes. Yeah. You know, you don't want to like, you know, like you know, try and do a little house cleaning or something like that. You know, in the Cadillac because someone's going to be looking at you. you right. Know? Right. That's um, right. Yeah. You know and what's funny? <laughs> Brian Setzer in yeah. a red tuxedo 
could walk by and he'd even do a double take. <laughs> yeah. A guy with a pompadour and an F-hole guitar and a red yeah. tuxedo with black lapels is scooting by with biscuit-toed Cab Calloway <laughs> wingtips, and you make him go, whoa, what? look at that whoa. ride. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. But yeah, but that's that's what's cool. I even drive in here tonight. And I mean, like, oh, literally man. people are, you know, they're like clapping, you know? Yeah. Or you know, like you're... It, and this sounds really corny, but it's like it's bringing joy you know, right. in the world. Unlike my Prius, which, yeah. you know. Well, well, no shit. I mean, there are not that many candy apple red 50-something yeah. Cadillacs in the Bay. Yeah. So if you see a candy apple red Cadillac, it's a good chance it's Jeff or someone that Jeff has let use the car. Yeah. Who do you let use the car? <laughs> Tony Partita has yeah. uh, used the car. It's been here in Benicia twice. before, too. I've seen it parked up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, let's mention Tony Partita because Partita Tequila is the official tequila of That's right. the Break It Down show. Yeah. It's the only tequila I drink. Yeah. It's excellent, right? It yeah. is. Yeah. It's fantastic. Do you, what do you like? Do you like the Resposado? Which one do you? Or do you all of them are great, but do you have so, a favorite? So he, at the last Lemons event, uh-huh. and I don't have to explain Lemons to your listeners. No, they, you know, yeah. yeah, we've got a J, uh, J, check out the J Lamb podcast. <laughs> And uh, that you learn about lemons. But uh, Tony Tony broke out the special case that comes with its own necklace. The Elegante. Yes. And so I think that you got to go with that. You and know? that's wow. sipping tequila. It's so good. Yeah. 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 We, we, we did a taste test between that. That's and- tequila you drink out of a stripper's belly button. Oh, yeah. You lick. You don't drink. You lick it. Like yeah. a kitty cat. Meow. Right. Like that. Ooh. Yeah. We did have a oh, photo speaking. shoot. Oh, yeah. Caddy. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, a friend of uh, Tony's was here. Come the stories. Have another beer, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, reaching a milestone birthday that wasn't too old, and right. always wanted to do a pinup photo shoot. Twenty one, right. probably. And so she she uh, borrowed the caddy and right. had a professional photographer um, photo her in various states of dress and undress. Oh, I haven't goodness. seen all the photos. I've only seen the ones that were suitable. Right. Um, but that's kind of cool. That is know? cool. When well, you know, that is. That's really cool. Take off their clothes and yeah. get photographed in your car. When your car makes you know, people clap the thing points. about that car is, if I were you, there is one accessory that I would have on that car, and that is, on a paddle, I would print "Show your tits." <laughs> Just so you could drive by and you get that applause, and then you could flash the paddle. Pow! <laughs> there you go. What do you think? And just destroy. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Who wouldn't? Anyway, yeah. when the when the mother is showing her little son the, right. the cool car, oh look at that! Isn't that great? Well, yeah. you don't. That's why you don't paint it on the side of the car. You yes. just put it on the paddle. So, yeah. I see. So, so yeah. you use it only at a. That's right. Time. That's a, yeah. A that's we're well, not shotgunning. You're a sniper. Let's understand that painting on the side of the car though is New York Rock Exchange. Right. Yeah. So he's associating his brand with Show Your Tits, which is a good or bad you know, thing. I mean, it, right. It, you got to you got to be a sniper there. Yeah. You yeah. got to be a sharpshooter. You can't just throw that out. So the funny thing about that car. Is it gets so much interest from women, really? But it's primarily women that can be my grandmother, because they're all like, "Oh, I, remember I when- lost my virginity in the car just <laughs> like that," you know. Like- and that we don't want to hear. <laughs> sure, we do. Why not? It's there. You know what? Your time is your time. Listen Love to the Bill celebrate. Withers. Yeah, listen to Bill Withers. Yeah, there you go. Is he around in the 50s? Or is he more 60s? It's more we want to hear that, I guess. You know what? I'm we want to hear if... the grandma losing their virginity stories. If you'd like to publish your grandma losing your virginity, send it to Pete at... Uh, Pete? No, 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 no. <laughs> send it to Jeff. Jeff yeah. at breakitdown.com. <laughs> so I want, I want to tell you, the, here's the funny story about Bill Withers. I learned this today, and this is I think is fascinating. Number one, ain't no sunshine when she gone. B-side. No. It no. was the B side. For those of you who don't know, B side is the the song they didn't pick to be the hit. You know, they're like, and hey, we got to put something on the other side of the record. Oh, yeah. we'll pick this one. When they made records out of vinyl, yeah. there had to be something on the mm-hmm. back. So he's in there with Donald Duck Dunn, who's a legendary musician. He's in there with Booker T, who produced it. You know, who if you Stephen Stills played Steven the guitar Stills. part, two time Hall of Fame inductee, first guy to be in more than once. Stephen Stills from Crosby, Stills and Nash. These guys are all in the same room, and he's like, I was going to write a third verse, but I didn't have one, so I just sang, I know, I know, as a place filler. And they're like, Don't change it, don't change it. And he's like, I was just kind of messing around making a song. Yeah, we're going to track over that, right? Donald Duck Dunn, who's playing this bass line that's keeping my Greeks together, says, don't change it. Booker T says, don't change it. Oh, got, so I didn't change it. You got to be right. I was making toilet seats for 747s at the time as my regular job. That dude moved from making shitter seats That's awesome. to that song. 
That's awesome. Incredible. I love those stories. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Five minutes before I was famous, I was whatever. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Hey, have you read the the story about uh, about the Beatles and and how they broke in the United States? Tell it. it no, I please mean, regale us. It was fascinating. There was a great story. I I can't do it justice. It was in Billboard, um, but I mean, it was a matter of like three months from the time that they were completely unknown in the United States to the fa- the time when they did the Ed Sullivan show, right? And there were however many people, you know, that... Right. That, uh, um, actually, what was it? Something like... A zillion. Well, it, I mean, it was... That zillion with a Z. It was, a, it, it was like 50% of the television viewing households in the United States. That's were watching. So tuned I mean, into it, it, was, yeah. it was one of the most amazing events. And they were completely unheard of three right. or four months beforehand. And... The, the whole thing was, so, so you know, they were with, I think it was Capitol Records in, no, Capitol was a U.S. company. Anyway, they were with a record label in the U.K., and uh, they were starting to blow up there, and there was an affiliate in the United States that had the rights to their music, and they kept on sending it over to the label over here, and the A&R guy at the label said, no, these guys aren't going to make it. Wow. This, this isn't, you know. There's a guy who's just not cut out for the business. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be an A and R guy, yeah. head A&R I want guy. I want the world to know that guy's name. We're yeah. gonna have to figure out that. You gotta, guy's name. yeah, Google that, Google that, because he passed on them not once, but like a dozen times. Oh my goodness! And just kept on saying. And so what happened was they started to blow up in the UK, and a stewardess brought over one of their albums uh, to one radio station. There and it go. was like a radio station in like Washington D.C. or in Philadelphia or something like that. It wasn't even like Alan Freed or something. No, no, it was just no. some dude. Yeah, it was just it was just some radio station. It could have been the Break It Down show, right? And he they, he gave the stewardess gave them the record, and he started playing it on the air, and some kids called in, you know, and pretty soon, you know, it started to gain some notoriety. Yeah, and you know, they were the only radio station right. that had the record. Yeah. Nobody else had it, and I mean, you got to think back in those yeah. days. There's no digital transmission. No. I mean, having that record was, was it like gold. And yeah, the lawyers right. were telling them, you know, did a cease and desist, and they're like, hell no, hell no. <laughs> you keep your letter. That's fine. You know, we're gonna keep on doing this. You know, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. And so it, it, it's an amazing story, you know, because it was really, truly the first viral hit. We think of viral as right. something in modern times, yeah, you know, with the internet and that sort of thing. But and nothing will ever be that viral. No, Never. No, no, yeah. no. And it, it was, uh, it, it, there was another factor I remember was that that was the first year Christmas that year, the big gift, you know, the Furby yeah. of that year. Right. The Furby. Was a, a transistor radio. Uh, a transistor radio. Okay. And it was the very first time that kids suddenly had their own portable music with one little, you yeah, know, earbud right, right. that they could listen to. And what to, they could hear. And they could choose the station uh-huh. and they could listen to it when their parents weren't there. And right. so that's what it was. It was this enormous revolution of children right. that was really a convergence of, of revolutions music. at the same was, time. Yeah, no, it's true. There's a technology revolution. But yeah. anyway, but it really is. And, and I really recommend that you go read that story because it's amazing. I'm going to read that story just because I want to know the name of the dipshit. <laughs> you know what? The, <laughs> they you passed I, on the Beatles a dozen <laughs> times. As you I and mean, I keep we talk about though. Bill Buckner for yeah. booting a ground ball. Yeah. You and I keep finding out though that we'll say, "Oh, there's you know, we'll, talk, we'll see someone. Someone will be on 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 uh, the, the the radio, and yep. we'll be like, oh, man, that guy, he's been obsolete for twenty years.' And we'll find out that guy's still working, right? So that guy might have discovered Rod Stewart. Yeah, that guy yeah. might five be, minutes that later. Guy might be Clive yeah. Davis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He just passed yeah. on that. Barry one. Gordy kept saying no, you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not black. I only do black guys. You know, it's like, oh, that's the Beatles. They, nope, don't care. Yeah, so we got to find out who it is, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if that guy, he wasn't a major A and R guy. You know, it wasn't like not he anymore. Was he wasn't. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. after that, he uh, his stock Boy. took a took a hit. Yeah, I'm trying to think of somebody who would be. I mean, that's a Munson mm-hmm. to to do a. Uh, it is kingpin reference. Yeah, mm-hmm. that it is, is a Munson. big Munson. Yeah, I like the Kingpin reference. I passed good. on the Beatles. How did you like to <laughs> several be times. that guy? <laughs> several times. Not still not good enough. Still not interested. Yeah. The most now this, successful. America's model. America's not gonna like this. Yeah. No, uh, you were wrong. Yep. The world liked it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Man. More than they liked you, A and R guy. Yeah. Anyway. And you know, so so to bring this thing full circle, so those guys go viral like that, and that's how you did it back then. The DJ got it, 
uh, Red Red Wine became a hit because the DJ said so. You know, they played it and people wanted to hear it. And you're kind of, you're recreating that experience in a modern context. But that's what New York Rock Exchange does is people get to say this song is important to us and we will spend our hard-earned money on it and have something in return. And uh, man, that is so cool. I love it. NewYorkRockExchange.com. Me too. Yeah. So let's do this, man. I hate to say it, but we're out of time for this podcast. But uh, Jeff, thanks, man. We Thank love you. you. Can we we love New York back. Rock Exchange. We want to have you back. And I want to tell you my war, my story about war. I won't call it a war story. It's not a war story. It's a story about the band War. And it's a very special story to me. And I'm going to tell it to you and the listeners when you come back. I think that sounds fantastic. Next time, I'm definitely going to prep a little bit more. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know we were doing the Grammy nominees tonight. Well, Otherwise, you know, I would have. Uh, it happens. I, I hey, we didn't even homework. finish picking our five, by the way. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But who cares? We'll, we'll, we'll do uh, that. Maybe we'll finish that you know pick. What? Maybe Some we'll... discussions are never meant to be settled. That's right. That's, that's right. right. And, and there's that's time. What makes it fantastic. There's time. It's not until next spring, so we can visit, revisit again. Really the serious. thing about not finishing, too, is we can go, yeah, Bill Withers, right? We said yes to that. Yeah. We said yes to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we I don't remember who else. Hey, you know what? Let's take Sting out of the lobby and put him on the list right now. That's, that's true. That's true because yeah. we have a spot, right? Yeah. Right. So, Sting, you're in. Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. You're, you're, you're Congratulations. in to break it down for a, a Hall of Fame. So. Are you going to email him or should I? Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll look. Okay. Yeah, you got the Rock Exchange thing. Maybe right. maybe that'll turn into some business for him. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the New York Rock Exchange, Jeff Anison, our dear friend. Thanks, man. Thank you, yeah, guys. Thank uh, you. I enjoyed thank it. You.